Welcome back, guys. We're going to cover section three today on the adaptive immune response. So sections one and two dealt with nonspecific defenses, um, right? exterior and interior nonspecific defenses, meaning that uh, it, it was trying to stop any sort of pathogen, foreign pathogen. Uh, here we're going to talk about the adaptive immune resp uh, response. So if the nonspecific defenses are breached, meaning something gets through it, the body begins a specific and coordinated uh, response against the particular pathogen. Okay, it's called the adaptive immune response. It's made up of macrophages, dendritic cells, and lymphocytes. You've heard of two of those here. Macrophages and dendritic cells also play the role in nonspecific defenses, so they do uh, both parts here. Okay, uh, lymphocytes are specialized white blood cells that are unique to the adaptive immune response, which you might see me abbreviate AIR, you know, AIR. Uh, there's two types of lymphocytes. We have B cells and T cells, and it's based on where they mature, is where these names come from. So lymphocytes are B cells or T cells. Um, they both come from stem cells found in your bone marrow. So if you're talking about like bone marrow transplants and why people need them, it's because uh, they need those stem cells to make lymphocytes. Okay. Uh, some stem cells complete their development in the bone marrow. That's why they're called B cells. Some of them leave the bone marrow, go out into the uh, circulatory system and enter the thymus, which is this uh, bit right here, which we'll see what that does on the next slide or two. Okay, so they get developed in the thymus, which become T cells. Okay, uh, and then once they develop into full lymphocytes, uh, they basically stand guard in various locations. So they hang out in bone marrow, lymph nodes, the thymus, spleen, connective tissue, uh, lots of places throughout your body. They're just sitting there waiting to be triggered. Okay, so the key organs involved in the immune system, the adaptive immune system response. Uh, firstly here, lymph nodes. Uh, your human body has about 500 of these things. They're kind of lining uh, down the core and some of your extremities. Uh, these contain masses of macrophages and lymphocytes. Um, if you've ever had an infection, and maybe the doctors described you of having swollen lymph nodes. They might feel around right underneath your jawbone, kind of underneath your ear. They might feel around there, um, and you might see kind of what's going on over here in this picture. Uh, this is where a, a very common lymph node is checked, this one right here. Uh, and if it's swollen, it's usually a sign that you've got some kind of infection going on. So these lymph nodes are filled up with leukocytes, bacteria, dead cells, parts of dead cells, and, and fluids. So when these things swell up, it's usually a sign that your body is activating some kind of adaptive immune response. So it's taking on a new type of pathogen. Okay. Uh, the thymus, which is located, if you saw in the previous picture, right underneath the breastbone and above the heart. Okay. Uh, the spleen, it's an organ located on the left side of the abdomen between the stomach and the diaphragm. It's the muscle that helps you breathe. Uh, and its job is to filter blood, exposing white blood cells that destroy microbes and aged red blood cells. So those white blood cells get a fresh batch of microbes dumped into them for them to check out to see uh, what belongs and what doesn't belong. And any old red blood cells, they'll take those out as well. Okay, and then one more organ here uh, is part of the adaptive immune response, tonsils, uh, the things in the back of your throat. They're located in a ring around the pharynx, so there's ones on each side here. Uh, they're designed to sample microbes entering the, just to say body, not the boy, I should say body here, uh, through the mouth, okay? Uh, so as you eat food or touch your, fa your face, your mouth, and things start to try to pass through your throat, they'll go by these tonsils. They're going to try to sample some of that stuff and see, okay, is this a good microbe or is it a pathogen? Uh, what exactly is it, and then depending on what that is, uh, macrophages and other leukocytes in the tonsils destroy invading microbes here and trigger an adaptive immune response. Okay, so it can trigger just by right the very first thing it comes in contact with entering your mouth, okay, the back of your throat there where your tonsils are. Uh, this, these are inflamed tonsils, by the way. This is tonsillitis, so this, this picture makes it really clear where it is. If any of you have had your tonsils removed, it might have been because of tonsillitis. Basically, you get inflammation around your tonsils, making it very difficult to breathe, to eat. It's very painful, uh, and so they'll remove your, your tonsils. Uh, you know, it, they're an, a helpful organ when it comes to uh, the adaptive immune response, but uh, certainly one that you can do without, the, do without. These can be removed if they get inflamed because you can get abscesses back here if this tissue dies off, so that's not good. Okay, and then 
uh, proteins involved in the immune system. So we just mentioned some of the key organs. Let's take a look at some of the proteins. Uh, three of them here. And the middle one I'm going to probably talk a lot about, if not today, uh, in a future section. But cytokines, these are produced by macrophages and lymphocytes. Okay, uh, Their job is communication between cells. So cytokines stimulate cell division in lymphocytes. So what are they doing? They're telling other lymphocytes, hey, start reproducing. We're going to need more of you to fight something off. Uh, they can also trigger inflammatory responses, okay, kind of like histamine, uh, and enhancing the resistance of cells to viral infection. Okay, So that's what cytokines do. Uh, antibodies. If you've been paying attention to the news at all in the last uh, <laughs> few weeks, uh, hearing about antibodies is pretty darn important. Um, so these are, it's a chemical, it looks like this over here, it's kind of a Y-shaped uh, looking protein, uh, pretty large, um, but they're produced by B cells, okay, the ones that develop in the bone marrow, uh, and their job is to help the immune system recognize invading familiar pathogens and destroy them. Okay, so when you get sick, okay, as your body is fighting s stuff off, what it does is it starts to create antibodies to that particular pathogen. It knows that I don't want to face this again, so let's create some antibodies to warn me if I get it. Okay, so what these things are, there's kind of a standard piece here. Uh, if I, let me change my color of this pin. Let's go, I guess, green. Uh, if I change this, there's kind of a standard piece. Um, so like right in here, this this outside Y shape, okay? That part is, is standard and doesn't change, okay? Uh, it's this outer bit here, this part that's in gray, that is a variable part to an antibody. So this is the same for every single antibody that you have, okay, this core piece to it, but these outer pieces, the tips of the Y, if you want to think of it like that, uh, those change, um, and, and they, what they're trying to do is recognize those pathogens you've had before, okay? So they try to be very, very specific. They're looking for something that... Uh, it says antigen or pathogen, something that's uh, not part of your body. These antibodies go and look for it, and they recognize it by connecting to the outside of that with this little piece right here. Okay, uh, so they're very specific. You've got lots of different antibodies. Um, if you get vaccines, hopefully you all are, are getting vaccines. Uh, what they do is they give your body a killed off bacteria or some kind of deactivated virus but the outside of the virus or bacteria is still the same. And so when you get injected with it, you're not going to experience the symptoms of that disease, but the outside of those cells or viral capsids or casings or whatever, uh, they're still there. They're in the vaccine, and your body is going to realize that's not normal, and it's going to start producing antibodies to fight that off. Even though it's not you know, in particular danger of doing anything to you as a vaccine, you produce antibodies to recognize that. So if you, you do come in contact with tetanus, uh, measles, things like that, that you already have antibodies against it. You don't have to experience the disease once for real to get the antibodies. That's why vaccines are incredibly helpful. Uh, if you've been paying attention at all to the news, uh, there's been a lot of talk about this COVID-19 antibody testing. And so what that would do is that if you have had this disease, uh, you should have antibodies built up to fight it back off. Your body would create these antibodies to fight it. So if we can test people for the antibodies, we know that, they, that they've had that disease and that they're less likely to have it again Okay, if they go back out in public. So it's kind of a big step forward of getting out of quarantine is if we can recognize who's had it uh, and they know that they're now not likely to get it again, not necessarily immune because um, it's, it's still possible that they could get it. We don't know for sure yet. Uh, but if they've already had it, they'll have antibodies for it. So anyway, there's a lot of stuff about antibodies, and I'll probably say more, too, if I get deeper into vaccines later in this chapter. But a very, very important chemical there, okay, uh, protein. And then complement proteins, these are synthesized by the liver and circulate in the blood. Their job is just to assist immune system in killing invading microbes. So uh, that's really it for this section. It's targeting, again, specific things, okay? You're looking for a specific pathogen, the first two sections are talking about non-specific.